And imagine this, a technology that could bring an end to organ transplant waiting lists and, of course, the agony of losing a loved one who is on one of those lists. It's a remarkable thought, isn't mm. it? Well, U.S. Re researchers say they're getting closer to making that a reality. They say they've developed a 3D printer that can literally print cartilage, bones, and muscles. Dr. Anthony Atala directs the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Joining us now to explain how it all works and how close to it is it is to printing usable organs. Uh, great to have you on the program. Um, I know you've been working on this for years. Uh, tell us how big of a breakthrough this really is. Well, you know, one of the challenges we had is uh, we could print structures, but they were small and they did not have the structural construct necessary to be implanted into tissues and, and humans. So basically the technology, what it does is it allows us to create human scale constructs that we can implant into patients. And okay, so what, what comes next? You, you're at this point now, where do you go with this? You know, right now we've actually shown that we can show, uh, print a broad range of tissues from soft tissues such as muscle to medium strength tissues such as cartilage, which are elastic, to strong tissues such as bone. So the concept now is to keep testing these tissues so we can get them into patients. So can you kind of go into the logistics of this and how you can actually 3D print living body parts? I understand you use living cells and kind of uh, mesh that with some kind of gel. Yes, yeah, so the concept actually is if a patient has a defect or an injury, you can do an x-ray of that area, and then basically the x-ray shows the area of the defect, and we can download that information digitally into our software program that drives the print hits and actually will print a structure that will fit that patient using the patient's own cells. Wow. What, what do you think will come first? I mean, we, we were seeing there uh, a video of like, a, 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 well, on the screen there now is the jawbone and on the right-hand side there is an ear. Does that come first uh, and then you move on to things like organs? Yeah, so basically in terms of complexity, flat structures are the least complex like skin. They're all complex, but flat structures like skin are the least complex. Tubular structures like blood vessels are the second level of complexity. Hollow non-tubular organs like the bladder or the stomach are the third level of complexity. And by far, the most complex are the solid organs like the heart or the lung. And we're gonna follow that pattern in terms of getting these tissues into patients. That's really remarkable. When you talk about uh, something like an ear and you try to implant that onto uh, uh, mice, how does that ear actually hold? Well, you know, these structures are actually built with cells and they retain their shape. So when you put them inside the body and you implant them, they actually retain the shape of the organ and they continue to mature. And the body then sprouts their blood vessels into the tissue that you've put in. So it incorporates itself into the body. 